You are now listening to United 96 Podcast on the RFK Refugees Podcast Network. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, RFK Refugees, sorry, United 96 and the RFK Refugees Podcast Network. Eventually, I'll get that. Eventually. One of these days, probably once we decide we're going to, then I'm going to start calling it United 96 if we ever change Correct. the name or That's do whatever. <laughs> That's how it always works, John. John, my good friend, how are you doing today? I hope you had a restful weekend. You did not go with me. You did not go to the DC United game that I Mm-mm. went to, which was, I, you know, you know, I, you know, I understand you had some other plans, but I, I was hurt a little bit. I cried multiple times. I really missed sweating, like really, really bad. <laughs> Although, like, it, it started to rain and then got cool, and there was a breeze I saw on the broadcast. So, like, it. I, it may have like sprinkled a little bit. I I never felt any rain. It was looking like it was going to rain. It never rained. Like I thought we were in the presence of a. Um, of a I was like watching the weather, and the weather was still saying like, oh, fifteen percent chance. It's not going to storm. It's just going to be cloudy, and uh, they were right. Um, it did not look like it was going to be that way, but it but it but the rain held off. Um, through the end, through the through the night, I don't think it rained at all. At least at least when I um when I woke up the next morning in the northern Virginia area, I didn't see any rain. I'm sad um, we missed. I, I am sad we missed the rare in-person team up, the, <laughs> the, the podcast hanging out in person. But yeah. another time, I'm sure. Uh, but it was, you know, it was, it was, it, it was extremely warm. I'm not going to lie. Um, the sun did go down, which was good. I think that kind of helped helped things a little bit. Um, but uh, it was still a very, very warm, very, very warm um, afternoon. Um, but John, you how was your weekend, man? Not 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 initially. Actually, I did have um, my ticket rep come over. Who actually, I should probably find the name who came and 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 sat down and said hello he to count. me. Which was he was a he was a good guy. He well, I see. So I sat actually. I, I got a, a seat below because you know there this this wasn't a well attended game, and he came and found me. Very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't know the story behind that, uh, I had originally planned to go to the to the um, Nashville game, but caught COVID. Emailed him, asked him if there was any recourse I had. I was expecting a sorry no. Have a nice day. He called me back and said, "Just pick a game. You know, try to get your money back. Pick a game, and uh, you, we'll, we'll, we'll give you tickets. Don't worry about it." So, very nice offer from him. Um, really, really nice guy from him. I'm trying to find his name um, so I don't forget it because it's been a it's we'll been a long it weekend, out. folks. <laughs> we'll I've tweeted about it a couple times. I think I've mentioned his name at least once on the show. So, but definitely want to give him a mention. Cool guy. Didn't get really recognized. I wasn't really near the supporter section, um, so I probably would have gotten recognized a little sooner. So, also was not a like well attended game, not a sparsely attended game. I also arrived pretty much right at kickoff. Um, I actually missed the first goal because I was in the line to get beer. So, um, well, wasn't that, that, that'll happen when uh, that'll happen I, when it's uh, sixty seconds? Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't. I didn't want to subject. I uh, also did, I didn't want to subject my friends to like a three hour, you know, scurry around DC in that heat. So we 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 took our time getting there, and I was I was perfectly fine. Um, so probably if I'd spent some more time around there, I bet I would have gotten recognized. But it was pretty much in and out. So, but John, how was your weekend? Enough about my weekend. How was your weekend? I wasn't recognized anywhere. To be honest <laughs> with you. It was kind of kind of insulting. Anywhere I went, I was I had to show people my ID to 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 have them know who I was. Uh no, it was good. We uh did some celebrating around the weekend. Didn't wasn't able to get to Audi Field. I'll be there for the rest of them. So, we just missed the one that you'll be at. <laughs> That's unfortunate for me. I, but yeah, I got to got to watch I I got to watch more MLS than usual. So much so that I spent 5 minutes for the first time since week 4 looking at my fantasy team. So, to <laughs> anyone who has faced me from week 4 to week whatever week this is, you got lucky, and now it's time. I'm going to try again, and it's time to try hard. <laughs> I, I would, That's I would, I, I would put some good money that I will probably be making one more return to Addy Field. I'm not sure right. when. Um, I don't know if it will include, you know, my wife or just me. But I think I still have some money that I, I bought one of those like Flex Plans account, which I actually love. But and I think I still have like a little bit of money left over on it. Um, so I think I can like buy like one more ticket and like just get like a small kind of discount on it i'll have to check the account i'm not sure but i'll probably make it there probably will be one more game in my future i skipped so many games that i had enough credits to buy a a sweet ticket for myself so for the last game of the season fc cincinnati i will be sitting with the the moneyed the money not the hoi polloi not the people who might recognize me everyone else (laughs) uh i'll be i'll be dining with them i'll be having all you can eat chicken fingers or whatever they give you up there i forget anyway Enough about Let's talk games. the things around the stadium. Let's talk about soccer. Let's talk about the game that we witnessed on Saturday. 
do we have to, John, or can we just can we just skip I through skip should. the game say we lost? Think, <laughs> I think I think there's stuff to talk about here. I think it's yeah. I think it's a pretty noteworthy game. Yeah, and then we'll talk about all the all the incoming player rumors that are going on. It, it is a why it is. If you remember the days when Wayne Rooney was playing here, uh, the Google alerts are hopping. There are there's going to be a DC <laughs> United story every week, and they're all you know ninety percent of them are going to be baloney, but. At least there are things happening, so we have stuff to tweet about and talk about. Yeah, so let's. Uh, yeah, it, we'll, we'll get to the news. We'll get to the news and rumors, which there are. They're still flying fast and furious. I believe just last night there was a, a brand new rumor for a brand new player none of us had ever heard of uh, that just dropped. But let's talk about the game. Let's start with uh, DC United Montreal. Imp- uh, sorry, not Montreal. Pack, CF Montreal. Um, it's the uh, it's the RFK refugees version of, Mon- of <laughs> CF Montreal 1908 or whatever the hell their name is. Changing changing their incredibly poorly designed logo. When will MLS teams learn? Uh, let's let's start let's start with the let's start with the game. Um, DC United coming off obviously the lineup. Let's start with the lineup. Uh, so I yeah. saw the lineup and I said, okay, well we're going young. Like this is a clear as clear as any indication. I mean the first the first big big thing was the fact that no Michael Estrada. No, Nigel or Bertha, both players that are uh, we're not even in the eighteen. Um, I think that probably confirms more than anything uh, that this that this is the end. This could be very well the end of the line for them. I think Michael Estrada is easy. You just say loan's done. Just go back. We're done here. Um, you know, go back to I, f- I think it was Pachuca, wasn't it? Forget which team he was. League of Max team. I'm trying to remember which League of Max team he was a, a part of. A team that was very excited to have him gone. So <laughs> Fans that were very excited to have him gone. Uh, mm-hmm. But the brother one's a little more complicated. I'm not sure what the what the plan is here. You could, you know, loan him down to Loudon uh, to free up that international slot. DC's been basically using Loudon as a shell game for international slots pretty much past couple seasons. Um, but I think this is as clear as any indication. And with the the rumors we're hearing about the international players coming in. Um, that this would be the this would be the end of the line for them. Am I jumping too far ahead, John, or do you do you read those tea leaves as well? Uh, Jason asked. Jason Anderson asked Chad in the press conference. Said, uh, "Hey, just noticed that these two players that have normally been your uh, attacking quadrant uh, were not on the field. Is there a reason why?" And he said, uh, "Competition. It's all about competition." And that was it. He said nothing more. So that's something that yeah. that, that is notable. Clearly, that's a Wayne Rooney choice. That's not a Chad Ashton choice at this point. So Wayne is in. Wayne is in training. Wayne is watching. Wayne is in training is a hard thing to say, and I don't think <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try to avoid saying that again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's very likely that they are gone. I think it's. I think it's very possible that this is. You know, like you said, the, the loan is easy to to get out of. Also, they were never going to pay five million. That was yeah. never going to happen. I don't. I don't. I don't care how much people on Discord think he's good. Either. That was not going to happen. Uh, and. For a million dollar player from Bulgaria, there are they've eaten larger costs like our designated player where they ate a transfer fee of four and a half times more of that. So if they want him gone, I'm sure there's a team in Bulgaria or mm-hmm. or, a t- or a league lower that would be interested in him and for pennies on the dollar. But yeah, I think I said when Wayne got here that his first ask when he met with uh, the front office was, I'm going to need 24 <laughs> international spots. <laughs> yeah. He might. Yeah, and, and you know it's it's I mean twenty four I think would be the max in there that there's available in the entire league maybe not but I mean it'd be very difficult to get they want them all no one else can have everyone else is domestic now yeah apparently so um they did uh so I think the big the bigger stories of the day uh, Rodriguez on the bench finally getting his visa sorted out um, visa's taking an inc- I will know visa's taking an incredibly long time um, I'm really wondering when we're actually going to see um, Ravel Morrison or um, the new guy that was also apparently in the stands today which is very funny that that was the weirdest like story news in that the club basically leaked it out and the club sort of had the official story that that Victor Paulson was coming and he was there in the bench we'll get we'll talk a little about what we think about him um, but sort of shifting back to the lineup in the game uh, obviously the big stories of the day Donovan Pines getting the start um, and then you had your uh, young players, Jackson Hopkins, who was just on an interview uh, here on United 96. Uh, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. I believe it's now in the main feed. Uh, and uh, Ted Cudipietro getting appearances. Um, and uneven- Miguel Berry making his first start. And me. Miguel Berry making his first start, yeah. He was, he, he was, he was who I was trying to start with. Um, so changes all around uh, and absolute disaster 
to say the least, to open the game. Um, the worst start you could have. A ball's played back. And Donovan Pines, we <laughs> we got a uh, John. We got we got a little bit of uh, of of egg on our face when we talked about how Donovan Pines has really cut out the errors in his game, and then he goes and makes probably I'm going to go ahead and say the worst error of his career. I think this pretty much takes the cake. There was one where he tried to clear a ball and he swung and missed, and then the player re- recovered the ball and scored. So only because it looked funnier. <laughs> But it didn't happen in the first minute of the game. Well, this was a game that they really wanted to win. So well, the, that this is different. Well, I, I don't remember that moment specifically, but I'm, I mean, if it was a mad scramble in the box, that's at least somewhat like there's chaos in the box and you kind of miss the clearance. I forget the whole. I, I, I forget the whole situation, but I mean, th- this was this was pretty bad. Um, one, of, I'll, I'll say yes. one of the worst, maybe tied with that moment. John, what are we like? Let's start with this. Is, is yeah. this is this the end of the line for Donovan Pines? Is this, I mean, I, I just, we, we talk about how much he's improved and he's shown signs. And I actually, I will give him credit. I thought in the second half he recovered. Uh, he made some pretty nice defensive plays, um, some blocks. Uh, he looked like he had kind of, I think he made one run going forward, which was, you know, he does that, I think, once once a game. Mm-hmm. But it really does feel like, I mean, if you can't clean up your game at this point, what are we what are we doing here? Um, I don't know. A lot of a lot of a lot of fans seem like this seem to think this is it. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. Is this is this where where do you see Donovan Pines landing? Well, his contract ends this year. There's obviously going to be team options, but he could be let go for nothing at the end of this. It's a struggle because he has and everyone the reason why he gets so many chances is you look at him and you watch that second half and you see the good Donovan and you're like, "Man, this guy is like serious business he is a player that he's like he was on the fringes of being called in the national team because of his physical gifts Mm -hmm. and then he does this and the problem too is that once you become ask bill bell hamid about this once you become identified with a particular flaw in your game even if you don't do it for 15 games when you do it in your 16th game everyone's gonna say ah here he goes again see he didn't get it he didn't figure it out and he has had a relatively good season aside from this mistake he hasn't had a lot of op- 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 opportunities to, to yeah, make mistakes. His, his his playing time has been cut short. So it's tough when you get in there and the thing you are known for and are trying to distance yourself from you do immediately. That's a challenge. I don't think he'll I don't think he'll be gone. I think this based on this lineup and the fact that all the players that are gonna get brought in are gonna get here too late. I feel like they know that this season is over for the most part for all intents and purposes this is this is about 2023 so i think they're going to give him a lot of chances mm-hmm. i think they're going to give him so many chances through the rest of this year to see if i don't know see if wayne has some magical mental exercises he can be doing to eliminate these 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 some complete brain farts i don't know sports don't psychologist know do, something I mean, <laughs> yeah something cuz it's got to be wearing on him at this point you see like he did a good job of not hanging his head too far after that, where it would have been very easy to be like, I cannot believe I did this again. Um, he didn't do that. He, you know, he picked himself up and he, you know, he got out there and he played. And like you said, he improved. It didn't, he did not allow it to spiral, which to me is the bigger mental problem when a player has a mistake that he repeats and then cannot dig himself out of the hole when it gets worse. So he did better there. I don't know. I think he probably sticks around at least this season. They want and they give him as many opportunities as possible to see if they can knock that out of his game. Yeah, and I mean, and overall, it was just kind of a rough performance in the first half. There wasn't a whole lot of offensive ability. Um, this team is still struggling in the center of midfield. We'll get into the potential replacement that's going to come there. Um, I thought uh, Jafal, uh, who I have sort of. I think is a pre can be a pretty decent player. Um, I thought he had one of his worst games. If I'm being honest, he made a lot of really bad passes, uh, particularly one that almost resulted in a chip for a goal. Um, he made a couple pretty nice, like defensive plays, but just he, he made, I, I think I'm willing to give a mulligan on, you know, one bad pass, but I'm, I know for a fact he made two just like no one even close. And I don't know if he just, I don't know what he's thinking in that moment, but just two incredibly bad passes in the middle of the field completely stuns. It's like completely just like disintegrates an attack. Um, I, I think with the internationals coming in, I think he's in an incredibly tight spot. Um, I think he sticks around. He probably, I think he is a prime candidate 
right now to go back to Loudon, and maybe he needs some minutes, maybe in kind of a lower division great. to get some confidence for him. Much more than Nigel, like this, that makes sense. He's a player that actually could do really mm-hmm. well with. Also, letting him find out what his real skill set is, where he really can flourish with this team, because it feels like he's being jammed into a spot that he may not, that may not be his skill set at the moment. I don't know, I, but like you said. I'm remembering just one square ball, like directly to a Montreal attacker, like maybe ten feet from. He just like he looked directly at him and passed directly. Yeah, at him. yeah. And it was very, very it, wild. It happened twice. There was definitely another. I think it was pretty close. I just remember like an attack. The team gets the ball. There's kind of some nice passing, some nice build up, and then it's just like the the entire attack just kind of ends at that moment. Um, second goal. I'm not. He wasn't. The, he's. The, go ahead. He was not the only. I was just gonna say defend. What, we could just talk about this whole back line because that's really what mm-hmm. this game. You know, was lost. Jesus Samake getting getting cooked out there. I, I think that's just I think that's just the way it goes. I think he was. Uh, I, I think on the second goal he was the one that was was gotten past for a cross. Is mm-hmm. that right? I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean that that's been the, that's been the thing on him. I think in, the, in his little uh, his small opportunities he's had to play with DC United, it's been sort of beaten for pace and out muscled. Uh, Drew Skendrich hit right back. Disaster. It's weird. <laughs> Disaster. Uh, people much more intelligent about tactics say that he was that was like a faux right back, like a false right back, <laughs> like a position it, that I guess is real. And then it, it, he would slip inside and allow Durkin. I guess there was another player that would occupy the space. I don't know. I don't think it matters. I think I think that was a weird tactical choice, and that player is not suited to do whatever he was he was being asked to do. Yeah, I, I think Skundrich again. It's the same same situation, I think. It's very clearly that uh, the, the coaching staff loves him, I guess, for his efforts and everything like that. Uh, but putting it on the field, if he is still on the field in 2023, uh, getting regular starting minutes like he's getting right now, then something disastrous has happened. And, and alarm bells should be going off. There's always a player in a bad season you identify with. Well, I sure hope he's not on the field next season. Or at least starting regular. I think he serves a somewhat of a purpose. I don't. I don't have quite the. He's terrible. I think he's being asked to do more than what he's capable of. And I think as a uh, as a fill in guy, as a guy to come off the bench, you know, maybe to try to hold the ball a little bit to kind of disrupt things in the middle. I think he can be pretty effective at that. But as a you know locked in starter week in and week out, nope, absolutely not. I, I sure. I hope there are better better options. Um, better options coming about um you're right the back line is where this game was lost really the first you know 15 20 minutes two goals down uh the team did recover and i think if they found a way to get a goal in the first half we might be looking at a different game um uh, taxi uh, a little bit of a quiet game but did have a a massive opportunity sort of on the corner um very very effective at sort of lurking on that back corner and the when the ball finds him um, they were looking for him on set plays. Uh, you know, if it wasn't on the like on the back corner, it was somewhere else. Uh, I, I will say, I don't think Jackson Hopkins had the best um, had the best first half. Uh, but seeing his service, which was which was an aspect of his game that I really, I know I, I know it probably is there, and I'm sure some other people have seen it. But to do it at that the level he was doing it at, I think actually was uh, pretty pretty impressive and. I think that is something I'm hopeful uh, will grow in his game. And, and if he can master that kind of service um, and he can sort of get to that Gressel level type of attack, uh, then it makes the Gressel trade, you know, regardless of how it went down and how Gressel was treated, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, I thought he had probably, of the two sort of young guys that were kind of watching Ted Pietro and Jackson Hopkins, I thought Jackson Hopkins had the stronger game. Obviously gets the assist, but aside from that, I thought he had the stronger game. Um, what did you make of, of both the both the sort of young future players that we've sort of hung our hats on as maybe being potential yes. big names? Uh, it's what you said. Second half, Jackson Hopkins looked a lot better. Ted Cutipietro looked a little bit off of it. He looked much more confident against Bayern, which is weird. Uh, I think it may be a real game. Things are a little bit different. I hope that that is not going to be uh, a sign that they're not going to go back to him and give him another chance because you and I both believe in his talent mm-hmm. and I think that – in a different situation. I mean, the game, they weren't on the front foot until some period in the second half. They really turned it around a little bit there and they were being more dangerous. Um, so uh, it's, it's tough to draw too many conclusions. Austin Berry, 
Uh, not Miguel Berry, not Austin Berry. That's, <laughs> I got confused. When they tried him, I was like, he's still in the league? Weird. <laughs> um, Miguel Berry looked pretty good. He had a, he had a couple chances mm-hmm. that if things had gone a little bit differently, uh, he was scoring. He was, he was putting himself in dangerous spots and making himself available. Uh, for a forward, though, you gotta, you've got to convert. So we'll, I'll give him, we'll give him some time. He's, he's not had a very productive 2022, which is why we have him and why he was pretty affordable. So let's hope that I think he's, I think he might be a player that needs to score to get some confidence to get the ball rolling, uh, and that's what we need. I think Ola Kamara is now going to be until he's gone, is going to be our super sub, which is the position as as you as you read about where people think if Ola does move, what happens? That's sort of what he, what his role will be wherever he goes. So it's good that we get him in this spot because that is potentially where he could still bring some danger. Uh, and I don't think he really did in this game, but I think in another game he might. Yeah, real real question for him as a whole is whether he wants to be in that role next season. I think if they could get the numbers, if they could figure out the math and, and everything else, I'd love to have him. Um, I'd love to have him as super sub. I think that would be an, an incredible position. Again, they got to get the money figured out, and I think you're looking at a player entering free agency. Guarantee you he's going to be talking around to some teams. You look at a team like St. Louis that might just want a locked-in starting striker depending on where, where, where they want to move or a guy they can bring in, they're going to have some extra allocation money. They can afford to, you know, have the luxury. Um, the question is going to be whether DC is going to have that, have that luxury to, to do so. Um, but uh, I thought my Barry was, was okay. I think the, the developing the chemistry with taxi is going to be very important um, for success here. Um, there isn't a Zella Ray on type player. Um, we have Ravel Morrison. We'll see what he can bring. Um, but it's going to be important for him right now to develop that chemistry with taxi. It, it, it started to get a little better. I thought in the, in the second half, first half, I, I didn't think he was very great. He was, I mean, he was kind of absent. And then again, the whole offense was cause they were just not getting the chances that they, uh, that they deserved. But um, overall, I think I, I saw some, yeah, I think he had one nice play in the second half where I thought maybe he takes that, maybe takes that shot a little quicker. Maybe it finds the back of the net. Um, yeah. I think also the game really kind of turned when Martin Rodriguez and Andy Nahar both yep. came on in the 63rd minute. They brought a dimension to the team, which is what I think what everyone wants from a DC United. They, it was a lot more, it was it was a little bit more excitement, a little bit more flair, mm-hmm. a little bit more trying to be creative in the final third to create opportunities. So we got a very short look. I felt like a very short look of, you know, 27 minutes for Martin Rodriguez. Um, I'm excited to see him play from the start. I think we, I was just saying that I hope Ted gets uh, Cudi Pietro gets more starts, and then I remember that Ravel Morrison is coming is here, and Martin Rodriguez is here. I was like, so maybe, <laughs> so maybe not immediately. I think they're they're going to want to get him in there and see what kind of uh, relationship he can form with Taxi uh, mm-hmm. and Andy. I think having Andy behind him uh, at the at the left back and having and having him in front of him, I, I think will be pretty exciting. Uh, we still need a right back. We still need. I would fullbacks, please. Mucho. <laughs> We've not been linked to any of them. Uh, I I really don't. Although I Chris really, Oyatsum, Chris yeah, Chris Oyatsum had like a uh, a bit of moment of magic there. Mm-hmm. I think he had, a, he had about he was on the field for how long? Forty five minutes? Or was uh yeah forty? He was yeah, he was he was subbed on. He was subbed on in halftime for for um uh for for, our, our uh, for Drew Skandrich, yeah. So he had a very good half. Uh, he had a run that we thought we were about to see, like goal of the year, as far as like DC United, <laughs> uh, move, like just just carried the ball all the way uh, from midfield. I think about midfield, and then looked like he had an opportunity to open up and shoot, and didn't took it a little bit further and gave himself no angle and, and got a corner out of it. But uh, people are very excited to see what he can do. And you know what? Uh, I'm not always been his biggest fan, but he is our natural right back on this roster. He's the guy that can do it and is not playing out of position when he does it. So I think you're going to see, just like I think you're going to see a lot of Donovan because they need to figure out what they have with him. I think you're going to see a lot of Chris because I don't, I've not heard anything about fullbacks uh, and this team and all of the the rumors that we've heard. So he may be it. And, And the interesting, I mean, the interesting thing about this is his role has now shifted with this team with sort of this change in formation. Um, I don't think he fit well as a, sort of winger wing wing back type of situ you know guy who's going to push forward he doesn't have that ability but you know as a fullback who pushes forward occasionally but mainly stays sort of on the defensive half he could be rather effective um i mean you look at uh joseph moore is a perfect example of this when they played sort of the four two three one 
Joseph Mora was a lot more effective than when they switched over to the what Lasada played, which was a three four three type of where the the position he played was sort of shifted up the field and it requires more offensive as well as you know some defensive responsibility and you have the extra center backs to kind of cover things defensively. Um, so this sort of change to four two three one four four two is what we're hearing is sort of the overall goal of this lineup. Um, could actually be make him a more effective player, and maybe it plays him in a role where his skill set is is better suited. Um, so I, I, I'm I want to see more of of Chris Odiatsum in the um, coming up uh, this season, and just kind of see what we have with him. He's not very expensive, um, so I think he would be standing a good chance if he shows well that you know this team would say, look, we need. You know, we, we know you want your international players, Wayne, but we also need to uh, figure out a way to bring some um, some of the some of the um, uh, so some, you know, domestic players as well. So this team can't go full international, um, but they definitely can can bring in some domestic players. So um, other any other news and notes you want to drop from the game? Um, obviously, you talked about Rodriguez. One thing I was about Rodriguez is I saw at least one wayward cross, I believe, in this game. So. Uh, that that was the, sort of the knock on him. So that that's definitely something that hasn't improved. Let's say to say the least. So the, the scouting report was correct on that. Yeah, I'm I'm still you know the things that I'm still looking at are what's the goalkeeper situation mm-hmm. look like? Uh, we, we we brought up last week. Tyler Miller is in the is in the news. That's a MLS name versus a international name coming from Wayne Rooney. So this is not coming from Wayne Rooney. This is coming from the spreadsheets uh, and, and our interleague feelers. I get I get the feeling that the team also is not super impressed with what he's uh, offering, what uh, Romo is offering. So Bill Hamid still is not coming. He's now posting uh, his Instagram. He was like on some like I don't know where he, he looks like he's on an island somewhere. I don't know. He's not <laughs> around. He's he's not local. Um, but yeah, let's talk sort of big picture about this game because that's what I, I came away. I wasn't there, so I didn't get the uh, the weather exposure that make makes me feel a little less optimistic sometimes when I sit through a loss and I'm hot and sweaty. But watching from home, my conclusion was watching after that second half, after seeing the lineup that was trotted out, the players that were on the bench who came in and made a difference, I said, here's where my mind is at. 2022 is over. It's not over in calendar sense, but it's over. It's it's done now. Um we may mathematically be able to eke out a playoff spot, but this team's not ready, and that's okay. That's fine. Uh, have we been rebuilding? Have we been in a state of we're almost there for years and years now? Yeah, but now for real, if you look at this lineup, this is this is a rebuilding. Is it strange that it's a rebuilding happening as Wayne Rooney gets here and he's got a year and a half contract with an option year? But we all know that that means a year and a half contract. It's a little weird, uh, particularly as the players that he's bringing in are usually signing contracts that match his because they don't want to stay longer than him, uh, potentially. There's going to be options, and it's different for players than it is for Wayne Rooney, but still, nonetheless. But as a fan, it's all about 23 now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all about what can we what what can we unearth about these players here? How, how can we get Taxi the support he needs to continue being great? Because he still is, even on games where he's been isolated. And what are, what of these young players are going to put themselves in the conversation. I think he would want to have, and all we know about Wayne Rooney is that the Darby County experience was young players mixed with veterans. That was somewhat brought up, brought on by the fact that they didn't have any money. So <laughs> like, I don't think, I think, I think if he had money, he maybe would have picked a different strategy, but he doesn't have money really that much here. Uh, although we're hearing a lot of, we're hearing lots of conversations about uh, money being thrown about now, but overall I wasn't upset. I was happy. I was saying I can I can get behind seeing another uh, half a season of this because they didn't roll over. They could have rolled over after that first goal. It's a, certainly you had that feeling, and I know you felt it in there. Like oh, here we go again, unbelievable. But that second half was a different story, and they fought, and there was some young players in the middle of it. So I felt like, yeah, sign me up for this. Um, I'll renew my ticket. Like <laughs> let's do this in twenty three. What what was your feeling actually being there? Did you have sort of a similar takeaway? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've maybe resorted myself to this maybe a little bit quicker. Um, I, pretty much once Wayne went in here, once the team traded Julie, pretty pretty much after the Julian Gressel trade, I was like, all right, that, this is re- this is pretty clear now. This is no longer about making the playoffs. This is about rebuilding. Um, I'm perfectly honestly, I'm perfectly fine with this. 
uh, I think some people have snarkily pointed out and said, well, 2021 was supposed to build into 2022. And I said, okay, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> like, what do you want me to say? Um, it didn't. Uh, so, we're, we, you know, you, you kind of move on a bit. And, you know, it's it, it, it just, for me, just doesn't, I'm looking at what this team is. I'm looking at what this team can be in the future. Um, I'm a little, I, I will admit, I'm a little apprehensive I was expecting Wayne to want to bring in his guys, um, but it really does sort of feel like, and we'll talk about this probably coming up about how much this is, he's in control. If he is still showing that same, my, my biggest fear is that, you know, he talks like he loves Jackson Hopkins. Jackson Hopkins has a, oh, so, so game, maybe makes an appearance. Teku Di Pietro, you know, has a, a so, so game. And then that kind of draw, he's like, nope, I need to go out and, you know, this isn't working. I need to go out and get guys that are going to be big. Uh, so I hope that doesn't. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that he continues to sort of invest in in um, in um, in sort of the younger players. Uh, let's let's talk about this. Let's move on to the to the to the sort of rumored players, the players that are coming in. Um, first question, actually, uh, let's get into this from Mark Ricklin. He says, is there a method to the to the madness of our transfer move? Does any lack of defensive re- re- sport, reinforcement, speculation, or otherwise signal Wayne has given up on results for the rest for this season? Um, I would say that is definitely probably true. I think the, the playoff line is, well, we're not mathematically eliminated yet, so sure, you know, we want to go out and make the playoffs and try to win every game. But, I mean, I think even Wayne would say, pro- and they've talked about too, they said it's probably a long shot. But we're still alive, so we still want to try to somewhat fight for it. But this is very clearly the bigger picture is 2023, and I think we've talked about that. It's you know that is it, that's where this team is 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 shooting for. Uh, is there a method to the madness? I think there is a method. I think I agree with what the team is doing. I understand everybody's like we don't have fullbacks, we don't have this, we don't have that. I'm like honestly, like we're we're bad all over the field. We're still bad all over the field. Get the offense right. Get the offense cooking by the end of the season. If we're playing 3-3, if we're playing 3-2 games, if we're you know still giving up bad goals but we're creating chances and scoring goals, then honestly, at that point, I don't care. Then you can you can use the offseason to address the defensive issues. At, you know, As I've stated, there's a lot of free agency, especially on the defensive side of the ball coming up. So I think there's opportunity there. Um, any, any, any differences of opinion there? I know you talked about fullbacks. You want fullbacks, but... Um, It'd be nice. Um, just from just just it would be cool. Um, I think that they probably have come to the conclusion. That Wayne is probably also a former MLS veteran for a short time. It's probably like uh, I can maybe work with this defense. I can maybe get them there. I can't make someone have the creativity of a Rabel Morris. Mm-hmm. I can't. I, I know I have to import things that I can't get here that are in short supply, and maybe. Either these guys or some other guys on the free agent list or some of the draftees, I think he probably maybe maybe the you know however much the spreadsheets are still cooking uh, in, the front, in the front office like they probably think this is not necessarily personnel it's maybe just having a, a coordinated dip of form or we know that we have to make a turnover here either with Steve Birnbaum or maybe Brendan Heinzike wasn't the same player he was before the injury or whatever 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 like maybe they see that as something they're going to address in the winter. And right now they want to get these offensive players in, give them a longer time with the team to sort of figure out MLS so that they're ready to cook 2023. Whereas maybe defensive players don't have as big of a learning curve as a offensive creative player. That's a guess. I don't know. I'm not super concerned about it. I am like, you know, we just talked about 2023 uh, and then see what you get out of these young players and also give, you know, let these, let Rabel Morrison adjust MLS. Because everyone needs a little bit of time. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. When there's no pressure on. So uh, so we'll talk. We've got some we've got some rumors to talk about. A couple players that are rumored to come in. We have one the one that was already mentioned by Ted uh, that was in the uh, was in the press box or was in the owner's box with Wayne Rooney, uh, Victor Paulson, a player who was just I, I believe we actually paid a transfer fee transfer fee from Schalke. Uh, who plays a, a defensive midfielder position, which is something that I think this team needs. This is this is a position of weakness right now uh, for the club. So uh, Jafal had the game that he had. Chris Durkin is trying to find his level once again. I think he's had uh, some good games and some some poor games. Uh, but uh, Victor Paulson is a player with a lot of experience. Brief, very brief time at Red Bull, 
uh, 12 games in 2020 and 2012, uh, but has been a little bit everywhere. Started his career at Liverpool, played no games for them. Hibernian, uh, Nack Breda, Heisenborgs, Zurich, Darmstadt, Schalke. So he went to all of the leagues that you can go to, pretty much. Uh, he went to all of them. Uh, and he's an Iceland international. I'm not sure the last time he played for the national team. It's probably been a little bit of time. 2021, he played six games. So not that long ago. Uh, but he's a player that is coming on a pretty good pay packet, supposedly. Uh, multi-year, three-year potentially. Uh, I think uh, they, they, you know, numbers, rum, numbers are rumored and not, and not confirmed yet. But uh, he'll be on a, a decent salary. So this is a player I, that was clearly identified prior to Wayne Rooney. This is a this is a Lucy Rushton uh, and uh, and and other folks uh, call. So who knows as far as how this player is going to fit? Obviously, the team has been following him a while to make this sort of investment on the long scale. Uh, so we just have to see what uh, what he looks like when he gets on the field. Schalke did get relegated this last year, but. Anyway, uh, one other player that East United is looking at is Elijah Adebayo. So this one is interesting because Wayne uh, played him last season when he was with Luton Town. He scored 21 goals in 58 appearances. So that's bananas. Also bananas is apparently DC United is offering over uh, in surplus of $5 million for this transfer to go through. Uh, so that is, that's, a, that's well out of our normal pay range. Uh, but this is this is definitely also a Wayne Rooney identification. Some people have said that DC United was scouting the championship for strikers. Probably not the guy that Wayne Rooney loves the most, though. Probably that's just a coincidence. By the way, his name is Elijah Anuluwapu Oluwafanami Oluwat Oluwatomi Oluwalana Iomikalayan Adebayo. So, if anybody wants to get that entire name on a jersey. That would be cool. I think you should do that. Uh, but yeah, that that is an insane scoring rate. I don't know how we transfer what the conversion rate is from championship goals to MLS goals, but uh, we'll see. Also weird on his Wikipedia page, he says, primarily a forward, he's also played center defender. So that is a very League One. <laughs> that is a very League One slash championship uh, thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it, you know, the first this move, I think, kind of took a lot of people by surprise because we have so many, you know, central midfielders um but i think if you look at the um if you look at the fact of how they haven't how neither durkin nor canals has obviously been probably their most effective player but he is injured a lot this time wasn't his fault he was obviously having a kid uh, mazel tov congratulations to him on the birth of a son i believe i, I yep. believe so that's that's really awesome for him um so uh yeah, so I think getting him, getting getting this guy in, I, I had no idea who this dude was, and then our, and then the, his name sort of rang a bell when they said he was with Red Bulls in 2012. So he was there uh, on the other side for the infamous uh, "You can't hold us back" game, probably the last time the Red Bulls DC. He would probably be very surprised about how much the Red Bulls and DC rivalry doesn't matter anymore. So he, uh, so he has had experience there. Um, I think he'll bring some experience there. I can't say I, honestly. It's at this point, it's. Um, you know, it's it's just about getting getting bodies in, getting guys that you know Rooney could think. I do wonder if this is a Rooney signing or if this is a uh, a spreadsheet signing. I think that's what we're going to be doing the guessing game on this one. Um, I think because I, I think I, Wayne, we're here. Wayne, you think a spreadsheet? I'm, I'm I don't. I don't imagine sort of Wayne's watching a lot well. of two Bundesliga when he was spending time over in Derby. Maybe he was. Yeah. Maybe he loves it. Maybe he had the sky the special sky package that had the two Bundes, two Bundesliga. Uh, but I think this is a spreadsheet. Yeah, this is probably spreadsheet time. So solid player. Hopefully he can come in, be solid. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break down too soon. But um, but good to see this team. Um, good, good, good to see this team. You know, going out and, and making so. This is a I'm going to call this a defensive signing, in some capacity. So this is definitely a more on the that defensive counts. side of the ball. Uh, I think he, yeah, I think he plays more as sort of a holding sort of midfielder. So maybe you're going to see him. Him and Morrison kind of be those, uh, be kind of that with him sort of being the anchor, taking the Canals role. I do wonder what it's going to do for Canals. I think Canals is here through next year, is what I saw. So mm -hmm. curious what it does to Canals' role. Um, and also, we talked about Jafal's role in this team. Um, now that he's looking like he's going to be, he's going to be gone, uh, probably or at least takes up that international slot that Paulson would be used would, okay. would be used. Um, the striker you mentioned. Uh, I think he had his first kind of breakout season. Um, Luton Town is the team that he's currently playing at. 
16 goals last year in the in the championship. Uh, apparently, this is a signing that Rooney tried to try to lure, lure over to Derby. Um, was trying to get over to Derby, and Luton said uh, Luton said no. Um, he seems more of the target type of player. Um, so definitely, you're looking at probably going into next season, um, assuming Kamara and um, Kamara Estrada and Roberto are not there. Um, you're probably going to have, you know, if he comes here, you're going to have him and Miguel Berry sort of backing up. Seems pretty clear that Miguel Berry, I thought maybe Miguel Berry, they might say, well, we think Miguel Berry can be that starting player. Um, but I think it's pretty clear they, they want to go out and get sort of a DP number nine. And this guy would do it. This guy would be a DP. I think $5 million is the rumor price tag. Very funny to watch Luton Town fans call. Well, he's going to a retirement league. And I said, man, you are so out of date and so wrong with that. It's so funny. Always funny. Always funny to have the European, the English talk about that so yeah i mean we'll see if this happens um I, championship fans yeah. can pipe down about that like just be quiet like <laughs> calm <laughs> calm down champions we are we are we are pretty on we're pretty peers uh let's just calm down but yeah i mean this is uh <clears throat> this this signing would be interesting it probably it will i don't want to say is the first time for sure that a luton town player has been bought for a transfer fee into an mls side but i would think it probably is it's got <laughs> it's got to be uh I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited about this. is This is like kind of a off the wall. Normally, we don't play in the young English league space because they're a little bit overpriced usually. Um, but that, with that scoring record, by the way, championship teams are bananas for playing 40 games. He, he, he appeared in 42 games <laughs> last season. Like that is nuts. Uh, we, uh, the most you could play here is is not that. We'd have to make a pretty deep cup run and be in the league's cup probably to to, to make that many appearances. So, uh, I hope. I hope we get this done. That'd be a. This would be kind of a like a funny signing. I would be. I'd be excited. And it would also, like you said, spells the end of old Kamara under any and any pretext. There'd be no way. And Nigel Roberta, and <laughs> and Michael Estrada. It's going to be a lot of change. Don't buy anybody's jerseys, guys. I I, I said this about Juan Soto and the Nationals. Uh, don't buy any DC United blanks from here on for at least a year. Yeah. <laughs> For this year, maybe more. We'll see how this. We'll see how this dramatic, uh, this dramatic rebuild, rebuild goes. Um, I think that's going to do it. I don't have anything. I'm trying to give any other news and notes we have. I don't think there's any any other news and notes. We're going to wrap up the show, guys. I I will not the be only... here next week. I will be um, on on assignment, so to speak. Yep. The only one. The only bit of news is that Wayne Rooney is currently in England, finalizing his visa, and there is a hope that he will be available right. on the sidelines. Uh, against uh, Orlando, I believe, is this team we're playing next. Uh, somebody said, like, I forget yeah. it was on Discord, somebody was said, uh, Wayne Rooney uh, is on his way to the airport. He's just going to buy some cigarettes. He'll be right back. <laughs> and see how many suitcases he's bringing to Dallas. I was like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's possible. Well, the, the, it's a good joke. The training, the training center is low on milk. The training center is <laughs> low on milk, too. So you got to go get milk. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I, will not, I, said, I will not be here next week. I'll be on assignment. I'll be returning with better internet and everything. So hopefully we don't run into the situation that we're in. Yeah, we appreciate you all sticking through this. Um, guys, check us out, rgrvds.com slash uh, merch to buy some merch. Um, I need to get some of the merch in my actual hands you I do. Need to do that so I can advertise it on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dove into that yet. Um, guys, no kindred spirits this week as well. Um, they're on break, so we're going to take a break. Uh, though I was going to say check out the ESPN 60 on the NWSL, but that apparently has been delayed for more reporting. So, oh boy, we'll see what happens with that. Yep. Uh, but that looks like that is going to be uh, very interesting. Definitely works out from a, from a soccer perspective. Uh, definitely going in. Oh, um, one of the note, uh, one of the news and note, uh, MLS struggling. <laughs> Apparently struggling to get a deal done with Univision, uh, which is probably spelling some trouble with the with the team's linear deal. I don't know if you saw that news, but not not a good look there. Sorry, I just wanted to drop that last little bit of news in there. All right, guys, we promise we'll be better in the next couple of weeks. I won't be here, so the show's automatically going to get better. <laughs> um, but definitely check us out at rqrvgs.com. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Don't judge us based on this show. Uh, we'll catch you guys in a couple of weeks. I'll catch you in a couple of weeks. I'll see you guys next week. Vamos. Vamos. <laughs>